So show me just a normal forehand the way you are. So go start from the ready position. Ready. Back up a little bit. You're not going to get that back up. There you go. So ready position. Okay. Now go ahead and turn and hit a forehand. All right. Okay. This is just a reference to where your forehand is now. Okay. So on April the what? 15th, 2018. Okay, here we go. Ready? Go. Do it again. Do it slower. Okay, all right, good. There's the side shot. And then we'll go from the back. Go ahead. And again. Okay, good. That's good. All right. So we'll start from the back, okay? So what? Let's, let's go through some simple turning steps so you know what to do, ready? So first of all, ready position. So first of all, you want to get your hands where a little bit, get your hands a little bit further away from your body and then make a basketball hoop here with your hands so that there's plenty of space between the racket you don't have to like lay it over between you and the racket. So you're, you don't want your start with your hands close and your elbows on the body like this. Okay. You want your elbows off your body and then your hands in front. And then the best way to think about that, in my opinion, is to think about how you have a basketball hoop or you are holding a beach ball inside of your arms okay. like this, right? Okay. Now, do you see how your elbows are not touching your body? Yeah. Face the camera here and show the camera. Step in front of that. There you go. So do you? So drop your hips a little bit. Ready position. Okay, good. Now I want you to feel like you're up on your toes too, like you're not laying back on your heels, okay. up on the toes. Okay. See how your hands are starting to get back into your body now. There you go. Here. Okay. Get the racket into this position, right? Not so much laying on the side. Okay, but in that angle. Okay, all right. So like this position should feel comfortable after a little while. Okay. It's not gonna feel comfortable now because you're comfortable hanging, hanging out right here, right? And you, and you need to be here, right? It's like playing the piano for the first time. Most people, when they start playing piano, they, they, they don't hold, they, their palms are down. And so they try to play like this and then they get tired and they're like, I hate this, I'm quitting. And all they would have to train themselves to do is to pick up their wrist and hold them higher than their fingers. And now they don't get tired. Now your arms, your arms won't, your forearms won't get tired. You know, so like, just do that. You ever type before? Hold, yeah. let go of the racket. So I want you to, I want you to type, but I want you to lay your wrist down. Now type. Now feel all the tension in your hand. Yeah. Now pick your palms up. Now tight. Now do you feel any tension there? No. Right. So we need to make this efficient. So, so when you're starting out, you, you discipline yourself to have where it has, it's a beach ball, right? And the elbows are here and off your body and slightly in front of you like this okay. so that you have a good balanced start position. That's the first thing, right? It can't be there. Look at where you are now. No, no. Look at where you are now. It can't be there, right? So show me where it should be. Okay, good. Now, so you see how the racket is almost tipping back towards you? Yes. Okay, you need to get the racket tip where the hands are in this position, where the, the hands are behind the, behind the racket. Okay. So, right? Because that's just going to be too far to travel. If it's over here and you got to go to a forehand, you got to go all the way. It's just, it, tennis is a game of time. You don't have a lot of time. Got like one second to decide which way to turn and how much and there's a lot of information there so to start off in an ideal ready position is is it's often overlooked but it's one of the most important things okay. if you don't start so out here <coughs> now face face beside the t uh, high coach so that's the first thing here now when you turn when you make you want to turn the entire unit of your body not just your hands not just the right arm not just the upper body, but you want your whole body to turn, okay? And keep your hands in that same beach ball position right there. 
So when you turn, okay, now you look like you're about to fall over. And why? Yes, you were about to fall over because your feet were like this. It's like you're balancing on a high wire, right? So when you turn, you need to make sure you reorient your feet. And I like to like reorient your feet into a semi-open position. From there, you can move around, and then you can adjust and hit whatever stance you want based on the ball that's coming to you. But for now, I like to say when you adjust, adjust into the semi-open position, and then move. Now, you may have to move before that, but I'm, for, this perp for these purposes, you know where the ball is. Mm -hmm. So ready, go. So turn. There you go. Now from there, you need to adjust. So from here, you're gonna, this is when you separate your hands, okay? So it's turn, and now it's separate. Okay. So you're going to separate your hands. This hand, this left arm, okay, is going to build a bridge. Okay. The palm is down. And this hand is going to stay on this side of the body, and some have referred to this as petting the dog. Or you want your arm to at least be... It can be slightly bent, it can be extended. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but whatever is comfortable for you here. As long as the racket gets here and it stays here. Okay. So when you separate, you don't separate and the racket go here. Okay. And the arm go there. Okay. Right? But when you separate, this arm goes here, this arm goes here, and now you're basically loaded and you're doing this as you're adjusting to the ball. Okay. Now, it looks like you're too close already to this ball because you, you, you want to step down to this stroke. Yeah, there you go. So now at this point, you're going to want to, we're going to do a step down and then you're going to contact the ball and finish with all your weight on your front foot with your up on your toe. So that's just simply, that was just simply called a step down. So the contact move was a step down, okay? So ready position again. Okay, good, good. Now make your turn, adjust your feet. There you go. Now, are you too close? So let's just go, so start again and start further back because you know you're gonna step down to this ball. So start further back. So ready, turn, adjust your feet, adjust your feet. You still don't look balanced. Yeah, there you go. All right, now step down and then strike the ball. Good. Now, when you struck, so when you're here, go to that, go to the set position, load, the load position. Okay. Now, notice how far away the, the elbow is from the body now. Mm -hmm. and, and when you, and when you go to this ball, you're keeping the, trying to keep your hand on the same side of your body. Okay. You're not letting the racket drift behind you like this. Okay. okay. You're just letting it stay on this side of the body and then through to the to the ball okay. okay so let's do a few more so turn and then step down and good and as you're shadowing at home i like the way that you're actually like looking at your racket to see if it's getting in the position okay. and to see if it's staying here only because this is a rehearsal and you need to know you need to see where your racket is first i think and then you'll get to where you can feel it, right? And the way you'll train yourself on feel is you close your eyes and do this. So ready position. Let's see if you can close your eyes. And close your eyes. Uh, I don't even care if you hit the ball. Just go ahead and do everything with your eyes. So turn, separate. That's fine. I'm okay. Like you, it's, hard to, it's hard to hit the ball. But what you're doing with this shadowing exercise is you're starting to feel where is the racket? Is it over here or is the hand going behind me? Because you'll feel your body stretch, you know, or turn too much, okay. too much, right? All right, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so do it again. So ready position, close your eyes, turn, adjust your feet. Now step down and finish. Hey, you were feeling with the force where the ball was. <laughs> you use the force there. All right, do it again. So turn. Good. Now notice when you turn, you actually changed your grip. So when you're waiting, okay, when you're in the ready position, 
it's probably a good idea to have a forehand grip already. So you don't have to change your forehand, going to a forehand grip. Okay. Like have a forehand grip now, so get your forehand grip. No, in the ready position, yeah. That's, uh, is that, are you sure that's it? No, that's a, that's a service grip. Get to your forehand. Is it an Eastern or semi-Western? What do you have? I think it's an Eastern. Okay, all right, so get, go back to your grip. So you should have a forehand grip. It's almost like a hybrid. It's between Eastern and semi-Western, and that's fine. As long as it feels, does it feel comfortable? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So ready position. All right, now that racket's tipping back. Yeah, get it here. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you don't want it here. Okay, you want it here. Get the tip pointing away from your body. Okay. okay? We're just, just, try, just trying to make the, everything efficient so that there's less moving parts with the swing. Okay. The less moving parts with your swing, the less that can potentially go wrong and the more that can potentially go right. Okay, okay? so if, you, if there's less moving parts, you're probably going to be more consistent in the swing path and striking the ball cleanly, okay. right? If you're kind of, there's hitches and you know, kind of funkiness going on. It's not that it's bad. It's just, it's a quirky thing. And some people can work with their quirkiness because they've done it enough and they, or they have good, better timing or their eyes are better. So it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just, I like to see you have a very clean motion with less quirkiness. I like all my players to get rid of their quirkiness if we can, right? Depends on how old you are and how long you've been playing the game. Does that make sense? And it depends on how much you want to change and because <laughs> it's not up to me. Right? I, can, I can suggest change, but you've got to actually want to change. Okay, a lot of people want to be different, but they don't want to change. So they're not going to be different. So, but you, you've expressed that you want to have a better forehand. So let's work towards that. Okay, okay so ready position. All right, so turn and separate and go ahead. Good. Now, did you have to change your grip at all in that, in that process? No. Great. So that's one less thing to do. Now, we can change the grip as we go to our backhand, and we'll work on that when we, address, when we start working on the backhand. We'll start addressing that. Okay. But for now, let's just go with the forehand grip, because when you play a match, you're, you're going to hit about 70%. 7 out of 10 balls are going to be forehands, okay. and 3 out of 10 are going to be backhand on average. It could be 60-40, but I don't think I've ever seen the statistics go 50-50. Most of the time you're hitting more forehands than you are backhands just because you see a shot and you're like, I'm not going to hit a backhand, I'm going to run around. And people like to hit forehands typically more than backhands. There are a few that love their backhand more. So I'm not criticizing, I'm just pointing out some of the, some of the statistical facts that are out there. You, you're going to hit more forehands. So let's be prepared with a forehand grip. That's the reasoning behind it. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, if, we, if you agree that there should be a different reasoning, then let's talk about it. But for now, I mean, do you have any objections now? No. Perfect. Okay, that was easy. Okay, here we go. So ready position, hands away. There you go. Now, try to get a little bit more at speed. Okay. So at the speed you were turned. Not too big. Like, let's go like 70% your speed, not full speed. Ready, go. So turn. Okay, again. Okay, do it again. Stop. You see where your elbow is? Yeah. Is it close to your body? Yes. Okay, so where should you be pushing this? Out. Yes, away, right? So if you were petting a dog, the dog would be way out here. Okay. It would be off to the side. It wouldn't be like right here beside you. Okay. The, your elbow's too close to your body and you're gonna jam, you're gonna come into your body and jam yourself like that. Okay. Okay, you're gonna go. So there's lots of different things that can go wrong. We won't discuss that. Let's just get the let's just get it out here, away from our body when you turn. Separate, turn, there you go. Right. Did that feel more comfortable? Yes. Well that's another thing. You're gonna actually feel like more free. Did you feel like you created a lot more space there yes. than if the swing the elbow's too tight to your body? Yes. So it's a there tennis being having a better stroke in tennis has a lot more to do with feeling than this one, two, three mechanics. Okay. 
like that's a part of it like there are mechanical parts of the swing but you want it to flow and you want to feel the stroke be smooth and have good spacing and good timing okay. and rhythm okay. right now all of this is relative to the ball that's coming to you so this practice is basically we're just trying to groove this swing path and then as we get on the court and move around you're going to still set up the same way but there might be some adjustments and we'll address those when we when we need to okay, okay go ahead good let's do three more Okay, last one. Okay, I mean, I like it. I like where you're starting with this swing, and let's see if you can practice this or you send this home with you. Okay. And you're gonna do uh, minimum 100 back forehands and backhands a day. Okay. And then if you do more, we're gonna just, that's gonna be bonus for you. Okay. Okay, but you gotta do at least 100 a day. Okay, it's